That's what the comments sections of such places are. They will frustrate you. They will make you believe that there is not a single believer on the earth. That the gospel mission is a waste of time, and that you, if at all you believe upon it, are frankly just gonna disappear into the the, the wilderness with nobody hearing you speak, because there is an airplane in the sky that is interrupting thine speech. Thou shalt not be heard evermore again. Just stop. Season deserves put a prop in it, put a plug in it, put a sock in it. Sections of YouTube that nobody believes Jesus in. And I was there. I felt like a street evangelist outside of a pride event. Hey? With a Bible being thrown in a toilet and everything with people defecating on it. Hey? And then crying outside the court as to why in the world I even found myself in a jail cell in the first place. Hey? Like people coming at me with a barrage of insults and I'm like, oh, It is because I am at a pride event as a street evangelist. Should I run? Shall I flee? This is Beth Seda. Get out, dust your feet. It'll be a better day on the day of judgment for the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and for Sin and Tyre than it will be for this town. Flee if they persecute you in one town. So I fled. I fled these channels. I dared comment in lackluster pagan channels and gave my two cents worth. I dared comment on a, a misogynistic man's channel. <laughs> I got barraged. You know how it is that when, for instance, um, people come against Beyonce, how her beehive comes and gnaws away at you? I had man cave men. These bromance men, these misogynistic randos that are unrefined. <laughs> they came at me and I was like, oh! <laughs> And so I stopped commenting. I stopped replying to their replies. I stopped having a, a dialogue with beasts. Because I realized that what it's going to do is cause me to think that all men are like this. What it's going to do is make me feel like there's no hope. What it's going to do is make me write off all black men. What it's going to do is make me anticipate that goodness, they're all over. They're everywhere. They live among us. They are all over. It's ubiquitous. I will end up so hating black men that I will think literally there's no one that is a cut above the rest or no one that actually gives their life over the Lord Jesus Christ and does a better thing. I will end up being one of those people living in a session of society where everybody is a wife beater. So I got out. But, I mean, not before I had to be rebuked by the Most High on some carabs. What are you doing? You are in a section of so of YouTube where sorcerers thrive. You are in a section of YouTube where thirsty little women that are trying to get married by any means necessary literally go and pamper the arrogance of lackluster misogynistic men. You are in a section of YouTube where angry women are huffing and puffing about how these men ain't gonna change. You are in an environment that is going to only magnify your despair. Get out and find yourself in a place where people know that I... I, I bring healing to the land wherever the land it is wherever it is that um people are happy to embrace me as god get out get out go back to your brethren that you might feel like you're not alone because right now you're gonna feel alone your misery is gonna cause you to walk in a lackluster fashion and then also bring forward in your ministry all that bitterness i do not want you sticking around in this like strange environment it's ominous it's dark it's eerie it's frankly kind of poltergeistic there is some paranormal activity happening in it fly getting sauces pans and sauces and teaspoons are like hitting the refrigerator hey like dolls are speaking they're conduits when when you walk into the room you see chucky and his bride getting married right in your living room that's what this place is lots of paranormal activity because demons are thriving therein you have no business being there they're gonna mess with your brain they're gonna come right through the youtube screen and make you feel as if there's no way to go there's no way to run there's no way to walk there's no way to put your to lay your head at night there's no way to put your feet down on the ground you're gonna feel as if there is not a single patch of land on the planet where you can go where all this nonsense is not thriving and literally taking everybody over i gave you authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the part of the enemy and where you walk my authority shall resonate with you meaning that you will conquer entities when you walk into the room they will fear you they will scatter they will bounce they will be fretful of your presence and not the other way around and yet you have entered yourself into an ominous environment and indeed because you brought yourself into that space you're gonna feel overwhelmed beleaguered cooed frankly by entities darkness that thrive amidst these people they need to come to you not the other way around i've made you a fisher of men you stand on a mountain top like a city on a hill and you become the salt and the light of the nations you do not go down to their level they come to you you shine as a lantern at the top of a hill and they get drawn to the light not the other way around so go back to where you belong and do not be frazzled by the lackluster growth of your youtube channel and you also not be frazzled by just one mere mortal who is a, a man that i'm currently judging he is not the bane of your existence you are making him the bane of your existence seize yourself from thinking about such things and so therefore conquer the narrative overcome because i have given you all that you need in order to live a life in godliness the world is not that bad even though the world is currently really bad and that's why you need to focus on giving the message 
message of repentance that people might try and restore themselves to some kind of a semblance of a normal life it is chaos out here in these streets there is clamor it is cantankerous literally everything is being thrown across across the rooms and it's flying off the shelves you are not to be in that chaotic environment you are to stand apart from it but preach to it you are to preach to it but apart from it you must separate yourself you're not in the you are in the world but you're not of it so separate yourself be ye separate so i mean yeah i got that rebuke and i was like oh christ thank you who the thunk it nearly drowned thank you for rescuing a sister and so here i am here i am i am bitter presently only because i've just come out of a worthless relationship i wasn't supposed to be in because i thought somebody was saved when they weren't not born again and what it has done is caused me to languish unnecessarily and irresponsibly precisely because frankly i allowed that man to fluff his feathers for much too long he was obviously lost and i wanted to believe that I was right because i was lonely i was going through it um and he was able to successfully perniciously worm his way into my life like janice and jambres written off in second timothy three um so i basically had this coming i deserve it okay i am being basically judged punished if not like um disciplined for having accommodated somebody that was obviously wrong um and on top of that i had all the training i needed in order to basically see this guy from a mile away but because of my loneliness and my sorrow i let him in so now that he is abusing me afflicting me the way that he is it's like god is telling me but i told you this guy don't even listen to him don't respond to him when he's talking to you but you responded because you needed someone in your life and when he did come in now he is the bane of your existence you allowed him to come in even though i warned you so now i'm like basically taking my punishment or the crime that i did i'm doing the time for it okay but alongside then doing the time i still gotta be responsible and get rehabilitated in my prison i am in some kind of a jail cell i'm a hostage being subjugated to the tyranny of a bad man that won't repent and however long it's gonna take to wean myself from this guy or for this guy to stop doing what he's doing or for me to irrespective of what he's doing nonetheless thrive um i gotta try very hard to, to rise above it i gotta rise above it i found myself in a lackluster session of youtube because of this fool and i lingered in it for literally 48 hours and it, it comes at me when he afflicts me with sorcery and his sorcery always burdens me it brittles me heavily with lust as well i just find find myself all of a sudden just getting worked up in that way like out of the blue because he just keeps on like slapping me with incubus spirits like satanic sexual spirits because that's what he's coming in the name of he desires me that way so i get brittle with lust for like three days and then i conquer and then it comes back and it comes back and i just keep on asking god why don't you just neutralize him or cause him to repent something and the lord has been like you are the one that's been given the spirit of god to conquer darkness you are the one that is to flee from this wrath. You are the one that is to overcome this nonsense. He may or may not repent. And if he doesn't repent, you are not to imagine that you are going to be perpetually subjugated to his tyranny. You must conquer him, for you have the spirit of God in you. It is uncomfortable as Christians to embrace that because we want God to just slap people out the way. But at the end of the day, we are in the world, not of it. And people will continue to be crazy all the way up until we die. Like we are wheat growing among the tares. And so they will always afflict us, meaning that we have to be the ones that get to a new level of glory. Basically, we have got to evolve past a, a perpetual like afflictor. Someone that keeps on slapping us with something we have to rise above it because sometimes people just never repent literally they die in their sins they make like judas or saul do you understand so that's what we need to do so i'm currently overcoming my present saul or judas so perhaps he might be saul on the road to damascus and so therefore he gets saved whatever this guy is i should not have to rely on his repentance or god slapping him out the way i have to rely on the fact that i've got everything i need in order to conquer that darkness and so stop talking about it so much there is a problem not just in the black community but in the male and female communities respectively even though i personally am coming from a vantage point where i've experienced it as a black woman so i just feel as if though black men yeah right you can tell the agitation is still very deeply in me i need all that bitterness to be uprooted out of me i, I don't deny that um but it's not just black women lamenting in this way there is basically a problem between men and women and this is now finally me getting to the point i need to get to when adam and eve fell in the in the garden this is what judgment was given them by god for or having sinned against God like that the Lord said to Eve that yes indeed from now on you're gonna have babies with difficulty you are going to have pain in childbirth but over and above it your desire is going to be for your husband you would imagine that's not a curse it, it's not it doesn't sound like a curse off the bat right when God says from now on your desire will be for your husband it's like yeah okay fine it's all right from uh, you know the Lord says that a man must leave his mother and his father and cleave to his wife and the two become one flesh so it's a good thing for me to desire my husband but when you desire a man that does not do right by you that does not honor you that has no respect 
respect for you that has absolutely no um uh, re respect even for the authority, the authority that God gave him over you uh, uh, and so therefore just like abuses it then your desire for him your very strong desire for him is frankly the bane of your existence it is a curse it is curse like um, in the sense that you want him you long for him to do better you want him to do uh, to uh, honor you as a wife to be uh, faithful to well, all, be protecting and providing all these things that we desire from men but when your man is not doing all that uh, but you still want him high and low you're going to end up a bit abroad do you understand Adam's curse was that he will him and Eve frankly work by the sweat of his brow so basically he has to do everything in his power to provide it is written later on in God's word uh, as the years progress from the book of Genesis that if a man does not provide for his own household he is worse than an infidel right so men have a very strong pressure to provide and God said that in order to provide you're going to basically have to work by the sweat of your brow you're going to have to work like an animal do you understand just to get your daily bread in and second to that um uh, what what is this uh, curse then the Lord also told Adam that he's also going to want to lord it over his wife lord it over his wife with an iron fist so he's going to want to run the show rule the the environment precisely because he's providing the bread and it's very hard for him to get that bread so he's going to imagine that he doesn't need to give the woman anything other than money and his ability to run the show he's just going to be like i'm the boss and you don't get to say anything he's going to twist scripture out of context where he grabs um passages where the law said that a woman must be silent and a woman must not teach or exercise authority over a man um and also a woman must be submissive he's going to twist them out of context and, and basically interpret them to mean that you must say absolutely nothing at all when the lord has given us a job to be helper suitables and so therefore we are to speak give counsel be wind beneath our the wings of our men uh and we can't be wind beneath the wings of men if at all we don't even speak right so one must interpret scripture with scripture uh, understand the hermeneutical Im Im implications uh, of, of such passages as those like be scholastic and biblical and ver voracious about how you embrace or consume scripture that your prayers might not be hindered because while the lord does say a woman must be silent god said that if you don't listen to your women meaning therefore that they speak that your prayers are going to be hindered uh, so that the second adam corrects how the first adam thinks but the first adam's curse is the fact that he's going to want to lord it over a woman with an iron fist precisely because he is a provider and then fast forward 21st century here it is that we find ourselves with women working like dogs um uh in a way that provides food for them they are now working by the sweat of their brow and putting food on their table and so men feel as if their authority has been taken away from them um to run the show with money so they feel kind of emasculated by the fact that women cannot make money and on top of that women are so strong so manlike so androgynous that um they now also feel as if though their testosterone has been kind of thieved stolen cooed by the female um generation and so while women alongside having very strong androgynous kind of masculine with testicular heft careers they also want to be loved and cherished but these men are like what incentive do i have to love and cherish you needy random like thirsty female when you are basically doing my job running the show i want to run you i want to run you so they want women to be docile without even realizing that docility is not so much what god asks for out of women in the bible uh, rather what he sub um, uh, uh, um expects is submission submission and docility are two different things docility is stepford wife as in robot does not talk submission is honoring the words of your man who loves you the way that christ loves the church and it is respecting his authority respecting his provision his, respecting his manhood in the household but also precisely because of the fact that he is possible to honor in that way given that he does not cause you to want to sin against god a man that's going to make you want to walk away from your god ordained calling my goodness is not a man that is easy to submit to so lacking understanding of coming together in one accord in that regard as the second adam's commandments have been given us we then walk in the first adam's and um the i guess eve's uh following the false curse where it is that women just really want men to love them but in the 21st century it's kind of hard for us to get that love because we're kind of androgynous we are kind of manlike and on top of that it's very difficult to honor and respect men that we're making more money than we're to honor and respect men that also we are um that they refuse to love us they just like absolutely refuse like they withhold from us love and all that jazz and in then withholding from us the love that we need they have got power over us and that they cause us to be these bitter broads indeed these bitter older women that like are upset that they tried they were very right or die to men they tried to be helper suitables because that's what their jobs were but these men just refused we had desire for them but they sought um not or rather they decided not to love us back because that was their way of punishing us for daring take away their masculinity
As a result, there is what now? Thank you. World crisis between men and women. The divorce rate is ever on the end line, 50% and going up. And even within marriages, there's lots of unfaithfulness alongside lots of abuse on both sides, going both opposite directions. Women abusing men, men abusing women. Emotional manipulation, gaslighting, reverse psychology, all that jazz. And it's just like, it's so exhausting to look at. It is so incredibly exhausting to look at. And um, all of this chaos and clamor, understand, is exactly what's going to bring about the end of days. Like, it all just ties in. Because in the last days, people are going to, as a result of being fatigued from not getting what they want from the opposite sex, be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, blasphemous, or disobedient to parents, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, unthankful, unholy, ungrateful, slanderous, um, always learning, never coming to a knowledge of truth, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, have nothing to do with such people. They are Janice and Jambres, worming their way into the lives of weak world women who are burdened with passions. Do not take them seriously. Their folly will be obvious to everybody ultimately. Of course, I am paraphrasing some of the, um, I didn't say it properly, but that was like 2 Timothy 3. We, we get to a point where we are at war within ourselves, where men and women are divided, separated. And so we're getting very effeminate men and we're also getting very masculine women. Hello, LGBTQIA plus community. We are getting children being trained to embrace their sexuality literally at the age of five, where we've got porn stars training them on sexuality that come to their schools and show them dildos. That is what is going on in the Muslim modern society. And it is all rooted in the original fall in the curse of Adam and Eve, where Adam basically wants to lord it over a woman despite not actually honoring Christ when he tells him, love um, your wife as I love the church. And where Eve also wants to pretty much coup Adam's authority. And on top of that, she wants him to love her, but she is kind of difficult to love because she's basically a man. Men are attracted to very typically fem fem feminine traits and characteristics. And so the more masculine we become, the more you then expect men to love other men. It is no wonder therefore the gay tra trend is kind of on the incline. That's why generational Z's, 30 some percent of them uh, um, uh, relate themselves or identify themselves as uh, belonging to the LGBTQIA++ massive acronym that community. And that whole thing is participating to the earth's basic decline, dwindling state. Hey, The Lord destroys the earth, not because the earth is just kind of unruly. The Lord destroys the earth because people are unruly. In the days of Noah, the thoughts and intentions of mankind were evil continually and so therefore, what the Lord did was end it all. He brought the deluge he consumed everybody in a flood do you understand so if at all there are natural disasters in the world it's because we did it yes our sin has contributed to the mutiny against the planet it is written in god's word in the book of revelation that he is going to destroy those who destroy the earth human beings destroy the earth no not so much with burning uh, forests by causing a fire because you're an arsonist and that's just what you do out in these streets um we destroy the earth because we sin we sin we sin and so all this can this clamor this cantankerousness going on where men and women are butting heads in the cosmos it's basically but making the earth rumble groan grunt cause a whirlwind or a tsunami it is causing the class to come together and create lightning that's going to kill a man or a woman it is causing um the butterfly effect to cause chaos theory basically um a hurricane in a different part of the planet that that like creation is groaning because you're worthless as a human being it, as human beings as the human race the conglomerate hey okay? it's written in god's word that creation groans to see the sons of god revealed and so therefore because creation is groaning we are not going to get rest when creation groans it sounds like an earthquake when creation groans it looks like a cloud burst when creation groans it looks like following that cloud burst a flood when creation groans it looks like a whirlwind a tsunami it looks like a typhoon it looks like whatever under heaven it is that are all these natural disasters we're looking at on the planet the earth is mourning it's crying it's weeping precisely because you are whack the Bible said that we are fighting each other because we're cursed and the only way to come to restoration is to seek the Lord's face, repent. And upon repenting, then the, the first Adam will realize that it's irresponsible to not love his woman because she's living in the 21st century and having a career. And the Eve that has repented will realize that it is irresponsible to try and take over the man's responsibilities and disregard your biblical role as a woman to be a helper suitable. It is irresponsible to expect your man to cook and clean and to like make the bed and raise the children when that is your nurturing role to fulfill in the household. You cannot walk in a man's shoes and expect to be loved as a woman. You literally cannot have your bread buttered on both sides. It's that basic. And so, when you get restored to biblical womanhood, and when men get restored to biblical manhood, that is when you will finally get that Shanti's got a man at home phenomenon, where you get to be the only woman in this town that's married to a good guy. But you can never get that unless you, go, you give your life back to the Lord Jesus Christ. In this world, we get all of these like beautiful weddings that are happening all over the show that are like 
break people's backs, break budgets, and then they end in divorce after just a meager two, three years. Like that hundred thousand dollars or hundred thousand rands that you spent on that wedding day, it's just gone down the toilet. And you invested so much on serviettes and whatnot at that wedding. Like there's a reception on paying for each individual uh, head of people that you invited over and these heads now have to participate in the gossip about how it is that your husband cheated on you with a man. These man caves that men create, like these support groups where men go to, to comfort one another about the androgynous state of women is causing them to become gay i'm telling you now because these men are, are understood more by men than women are understanding them so they feel as if though if i can find comfort in you why not then just allow myself to be your boyfriend it's just a mess and the same thing is also true of women where women are turning to other women because these men don't get me my goodness i don't want to turn gay because i'm sick and tired of men because i know that's a sin against the lord god almighty so the proliferation even of the sodomic and gomorrah state of the earth right now where people are on this whole same sex drive and even disregarding that sex is a real thing disregarding basic biology and that only women can have children all that jazz it's, it's it stems from the fall of adam and eve and the original sin that caused therefore them to ultimately get to a point where now 30 percent of our kids are relating as lgbtqia plus etc what in the world where you are even trying to accommodate within that lgbtqia pronoun not pronoun what do you call this acronym uh pedo sexual what in the world like people who are into kids now like there is no end to what it is that you can get that you can gun for in terms of what's actually appropriate the world is becoming worse and worse and understand that if the world continues to taper downward and twist in the vortex of this insanity it will ultimately be brought to a blistering end the lord will not allow so much clamor on the planet to continue to be proliferated without him intervening he will eventually bring the millennial reign of Jesus Christ, however, not before lamb basting you first with a tribulation that is going to kill a third of the two-thirds creation of the human race. Most of you are going to be neutralized by the tribulation. Most of you are going to take the mark of the beast. Most of you are going to disregard what Christ has to say. Most of you are going to be upset because he's judging you for being so lackluster, for being so random, commenting randomly in random parts of random portions of random um, social media. Most of you are not going to make the tribulation. And the third that are left uh, standing are going to have literally gotten there by the skin of their teeth. So it is ideal to make the rapture, but it is also ideal to rather prevent the onset or the impending nature of the rapture so that you can survive, you can at least make it on this side where the world is still kind of livable it is still sufferable adam and eve are at war with each other butting heads i found myself in the station of youtube where everybody's busy fighting each other and i participated in that little war punched a guy or two because i was standing of course on the side of the females and i realized my goodness if at all i didn't turn to christ i'd be this crazy cantankerous like primate swinging on a chandelier in a house of a person that i am stealing the bananas off because in the wild out there i can't pick them fast enough I would have been like the rest of these bitter women that start out all bright and bushy-tailed thinking that men can be salvaged, thinking that love is possible and then I would get to my mid-30s to my 40s and I'd be like, they ain't jack, busy telling young women, be careful, you better get your own. I would have been like them if I was not perpetually corrected by the Holy Spirit, if I was not constantly corrected by the Holy Spirit, brought back, made to realize that God, I'll be walking in the flesh. This is a strategy of the last days. So my distracted state right now is only because it is the current state of the human race at large. It is chaotic. Everybody is twisting in some random lackluster wind. Do you understand? It is chaotic all over the show. Men are bashing women in on their heads. Women are bashing men in on their heads. And children are subjugated to the tyranny of that only to grow up in and of themselves to be just like mom and dad. Just a, a worthless conglomerate. A worthless generation of people. We are dying a spiritual death as the human race. And if at all you continue to go on this downward spiral, the Lord is going to take his children. And we are then going to watch you from heaven basically finish each other off adam and eve's curse was meant to bring about indeed the millennial reign of jesus christ it was supposed to bring about the righteous reign of jesus christ it was supposed to bring about the everlasting pure um landscape where human beings live with no sin at all heaven and earth the new heaven and the new earth it was supposed to ultimately bring for god a, a, a small number a remnant of people for his own possession that are not going to be defeatist against their own cause a maladaptive and so therefore leading the whole planet to entropy and the closer we get to that entropy the closer we are who are those of us who have have embraced Jesus from to being freed. I am dealing with a man right now that has not really given his life over to the Lord Jesus Christ but keeps on like you know like drowning his face in scripture and that man is still very typically earthly he's still very typically worldly and so therefore he treated me in like a very typical uh, ungodly man he treated me like a person that's not yet saved in the Lord Jesus Christ he treated me the way that these men are treating these women he was very misogynistic full of gaslighting reverse psychology he very typically broke me even though there was nothing there to break and he very typically also regretted it later on I was the one who got away and so therefore very typically invested in a lot of witchcraft to make sure I 
never rise again because he knows what mistake he made the same mistakes my ex made the same mistakes some guy who went and married another woman made the same mistake a whole bunch of men i come from the past having made so basically they keep on repeating the same mistakes it's a cycle over and over and over and over again until they get to the age of 60 realize i messed up but by then everybody has aged and nobody has an opportunity to do it all over again i entered into an unequal situation an unequally yoked situation with someone that I still, well, was still very worldly however professing the name of jesus so he was worse twice the son of hell than the rest of them but i was born again so what did it do to me it caused me to somewhat become kind of feminized it caused me to become the bitter woman that ultimately becomes that because men just won't get their act together basically men operate in the curse of adam and women operate in the curse of eve and so the two of us are butt heads until we get to a ripe old age and hate the fact that we lived the way that we lived i was dragged through the mud by someone who was yet to be refined by the holy spirit and so i basically tapered boarded close close got close to ending up in one of these camps on social media either a thirsty lady that is a, a pick me pick me pick me pick me pick me jumping up and down like a beast on the spot or being one of those angry women calling women indeed that want to be chosen because they apparently have hope in men telling them girl yeah you're fun you're hilarious <laughs> these guys ain't jack I, I was either gonna become one of those two and guess what i was the pick me girl in the earlier stages of my faith and now i'm the cynical one but with the holy spirit i am neither because i'm refined by the holy spirit i know better i am being massacred attempted murdered by some random fool because i dared imagine that i can rescue a man for christ that didn't even know him at the time that i met him he didn't know the lord and so he typically acted like a man in the world but i thought in all fairness to me that he was saved because he you know he spoke christianese he spoke christianese really well and now i am lambasted by all of his sorcery this world is coming to an end there is a drought in in europe and so therefore there are all these heat waves causing all of these wildfires and it sounds like a teletubby what is that river in 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 italy po the most um important dam or river or whatever in all of italy is is drying up and apparently there is so much salt water coming into the river because it's going against the uh, uh, current that that water is no longer um providable to farmers in in italy meaning that many of their crops are dying and that olive like whatever is their cultural heritage of plant life olive oil like you know how like it's got those italian roots they can't produce it anymore literally hundreds of years generations upon generations of farmland is being laid waste by the drought going on in europe at the present moment there are food shortages on shelves of um stores in in europe netherlands they're trying to take away 30 percent of the farmland there's no food going there spain is getting burnt to the ground the heat the sweltering heat is causing people to die apparently the sun is the single most murderous or homicidal natural disaster upon it getting to prolific levels on the earth currently in this present time so people are dying from heat related incidents and it kills us slowly without people knowing that's happening in europe and i mention europe because europe used to once upon a time be known as where it is that human beings have it it among the coldest continents on the earth antarctica doesn't count because it's frankly uninhabitable and uninhabitable europe is the second coldest continent on the earth white people are as white as they are having originated from europe precisely because of the lack of sun in that space and yet currently it is sweltering it is sweltering so when the it's called i guess global warming whatever when one of the con coldest continents on the earth people are dying from heat strokes the rivers are drying up we've got a problem in cape town in this country we apparently also have a drought there is some river there that um is also drying up where you people can actually walk on parts of the um river where there was supposed to be a shoulder height it's currently winter it's dry like no man's business it was overcast today and the clouds are clearing so without rain basically we get clouds but they're clouds without rain guess who else is described as clouds without rain in the human race pharisees people that keep on reading the scriptures of the lord jesus christ but don't for the life of them actually have any repentance in their hearts they're like clouds without rain and in south africa we've been getting clouds without rain for a minute it's winter we get it but we've always had one of those weathers that nah, really we don't know if it's winter we don't know if it's summer because winter feels like summer and summer feels like winter some winter days were so hot historically once upon a time in south africa that you didn't even know that it was winter and yet here it is so therefore we have had like consistently rain all throughout the year pretty much and decent amounts of it to keep our land nourished essentially sorry i thought somebody was coming yeah that's what we used to have and now we not only have got winters that have no rain of course like usually typically winters tend to not have rain but summer is also robbing us of rain and on top of that um it's dry so dry that we're getting wildfires in winter we like i just showed you one here before i started talking that's what's going on the earth is groaning 
Do you understand? There not only was a flood in 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 KZN, um, but there also now is a drought. So it's like just the, a combination of mixture in one country. KZN and 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 um, what do you call this? And the eastern and western Cape, they are coastal regions, so they are near the ocean. Basically, the other they have beaches and what have you. So it is likely why they are being as afflicted as they are as the, uh, more as uh, more afflicted than the inland, the mainland here. In for instance Johannesburg, where I find myself Gauteng, but still they were floods not so long ago in low-lying regions during some cloud bursts that happened in summer like the latter part of summer like perhaps like February this year and it displaced uh, informal settlement dwellers thankfully our houses are very strong in South Africa we are not like the American conglomerate who make their homes using wood we've got face break as you can see so we don't tend to just get taken away by winds and waves and like random showers of rain uh, or of wind type establishment thing but nonetheless we still get bad enough water logging sometimes to capsize entire um, the bridges. Look at what happened in KZN. It was bad enough to bring a country with the kind of housing infrastructure that we have. Nonetheless, houses were, were brought low because even brick and mortar, as hard knock as face brick, like what you're looking at in the background right now, sometimes comes to the ground if at all natural disasters sit around in it for long enough. It just takes a lot longer for our houses to be blown away than the ones in the US, for instance, because we're mostly face brick, but nonetheless, it eventually happens. And then there are two, three kids that die in uh, where is it because of a, a landslide that basically landed on a school during lessons and three children died however the majority of them survived but nonetheless one life is one too many uh, where, where, where did this happen one of the nations in a Asia uh, one of the, the villages in one of the countries in Asia I don't know if it's Indonesia or what I stand corrected but it's just it's really bad across the world right now and then there are the floods in bangladesh the floods in is it southern or eastern china um like and so at such a prolific scale as has never been seen before in india as well floods well i did mention bangladesh like that, that's just like that's what's happening currently and you you so you turn on the news and you notice that these things keep happening and in increasing measure creation is groaning and god is trying to get your attention to warn you that you're focusing on the wrong thing i mean who in the world when there was a wildfire so this one did not eventually come into our space but it is about the second or the third this year happening in that very patch of land thankfully it does not come in to gnaw away at our properties usually the fire brigade gets there on time but when a fire is so out of control especially in these dry um conditions that we're dealing with in winter sometimes it can eat your homes alive there are people that have had properties living in homes for like 40 years like literally four decades and they've just been swept away by either a wildfire or some hurricane or tornado or something that's going on here on earth displaced no joy no happiness literally you don't know what in the world is going on tomorrow and you are busy trying to steal the wife of some guy that is going to understand that the second adam is to repent from his random random desire to lord over a woman with an iron fist and make sure she doesn't talk you 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 are busy trying to steal a woman a wife that was not even yours in the first place because you ruined your life and now you want to go and grab a woman that is fresh off the shelves looking like a barbie doll wrapped and you want to come and put her in your household when then you mess up you want to kill her so her husband cannot marry her that's all you can think about well you know what those deeds are I i'm trying to tie events here that you might understand how dangerous things are right now for the human race and yet how irresponsibly uh responsive how irresponsibly responsive the human race is it's written in god's word i believe Hona in matthew 24 that in the last days it's going to be like the days of noah where people are going to be buying drinking selling uh building houses whatever marrying being given in marriage suppose of course then if you're marrying and being given in marriage you're also getting divorced fighting with your baby daddy making war about child maintenance trying to see who's going to pay alimony between the two of your sons now is no longer literally typically the man trying to see how in the world you can make your ex-wife uncomfortable and jealous trying to see how many of your mistresses you can now convert into a wife since you're a divorced man trying to see after you marry the second time who you're going to fornicate with and cheat this time around on your second wife trying to see how many extra um chances uh, a woman will continue to give you despite the fact that you're now in your 50s yeah you're going to be doing that just on a cycle and then suddenly calamity is going to overwhelm you because the last days are going to be like the days of noah people are going to be caring about their business being normal giving random like to advice that has nothing to do with jesus on the internet i was listening to this one i mean i get it like you know what he meant well this this one young white boy talking about how it is that you are special you were born for a purpose you 
are a one in a million shot you're a benefit or a blessing to the world and as inspirational as his little TikTok and YouTube short was at the end of the day it had nothing to do with Jesus Christ he was not encouraging people in Christ and I was like that's just a thing people in the world are on coping mechanisms they're on coping strategies everybody is getting super depressed because everybody is seeing that the world is going to the dogs basically and so they rock up on YouTube with their two cents worth worth of advice in worldly vain philosophies that are tossing them to and from like every wind of doctrine hoping to conquer or overcome or defeat the clear um like downward like slope that we are exponentially declining on of the human race of the planet at large we're trying to counsel ourselves i apologize if this wind is interrupting with my the audibility of my voice we are trying to counsel ourselves um with the fact that it's gonna be okay when it's not gonna be okay guys the world literally is going to end and when it does end some of y'all are not gonna make it to heaven most frankly not even some and so counseling people who are currently suicidal counseling people who are currently going through a divorce uh, counseling people who are newly broken up with boyfriends and girlfriends counseling kid people whose children have just died whatever counseling a woman who's just been widowed apart from uh, the, the gospel counseling them with worldly wisdom is gonna do nothing for you as a human race we need to repent things are gonna get worse and worse as time progresses literally they will get worse and there is only comfort in one place one place Jesus and he has also said that if these people will turn their heads from random insanity being in lackluster random places speaking random things to a random conglomerate of people that are randomly deceived in the absence of turning my hearts over from that randomness and actually finding true wisdom they will be decimated neutralized because I will set my children apart and take them out but if they repent I will heal their land I'm literally rooting for you I am advocating human race that the rapture would be delayed do you know how many Christians on earth are doing that few there are few Christians that don't want to just get out of here like in a split second just like Bashi and make like um what is the speedy gonzalez bullet like you know brrr. so many believes are like god just come quickly maranatha come lord jesus come come lord jesus come and i'm like yes come lord i would desire to go home because i really hate this place but at the end of the day i am so pained and so sorrowed for these people that don't even see that their problem is because of the fact that they are cursed as eve and adam respectively and that if they repent god will give them a, a shot again he will give them an opportunity but if they don't repent goodness job noah and daniel will be taken out of this town and then the lord is going to bring a deluge god is going to neutralize you he will take slot out of sodom he will take his believers out from the danger and you guys will be left to war with each other butting heads perpetually until you implode until entropy reaches you until the world is annihilated by the antichrist and then the lord will come with his saints but we will return after watching you guys kill each other in the squid game after watching you guys kill each other in the hunger game after watching you guys get neutralized one by one by a system of global elites that don't care that you're human and then we will reign here finally in a world that is sufferable that we can live in where justice finally reigns i am rooting for you bitter broad that is busy talking about men like they ain't jack i am rooting for you misogynistic fool that is busy talking about how women ain't jack i am rooting for you to live another like 100 years on earth but at this rate you're not gonna get it literally god is gonna show you you focused on all the wrong things but just like my brothers and sisters i desperately also want to go home i just want to throw in the towel i am tired i'm exhausted i am being afflicted by a fluffy little guy right now that won't stop throwing voodoo bombs into my environment wreaking havoc in my space preventing my youtube channel from thriving where it needs to thrive it is so discouraging for me to get into my channel and see that i've only gotten one view per 18 shorts like there was a day when i did like 14 14 what is it 16 shorts in one sitting alongside a big chunky video and all of them got just one view i mean it's it's weird i'm guys come on listen to me speak youtube is not recommending my work no it's not that youtube is not recommending my work it's that this guy is being allowed to thrive in his sorcery this is the message that i'm giving that is how futile he is and he is a man that is busy studying the scriptures how much more you who's not even touching a bible is gathering dust in your house every so often you open it in a life hmm, interesting and then move on you think you can have christianity as a badge an accessory like this uh, necklace like around my neck you know something that you can just accessorize your clothing with but it's not the be all and main and uh, and end all of outfit that you're wearing that covers your nakedness you think you can just i mean if you if i wore this alone and came here to talk you would consider me inappropriate basically bordering on pornographic however my clothing makes this beautiful christianity is not this it's the clothing it covers your nakedness and yet you have it as an accessory a bible that is gathering dust on your um what do you call this on your bookshelf alongside all of your other textbooks of philosophy psychology and whatever else that other random self-help techniques that you're walking in i 
have I will have absolutely no comfort under heaven at all and women of this world that are upset at men since I'm upset at men because there is no solution in that darkness I will also have no comfort on earth in women in this world that think that there's still a shot for men and they can do better when they have absolutely no help from the Holy Spirit to conquer those generational curses where men will do differently I don't have any solace or comfort in either being a thirsty little pick-me lady or ye or a bit abroad there is no solace in either of these groups and I once upon a time belonged to one of them the middle ground is Christ he is the one that enables these women to come together in one accord and realize that Jesus is what cures the destructive man Jesus is what cures the destructive woman and in the absence of repenting to him you will all twist around on the spot in a whirlwind until you bring the world to an end you will cause animals to grieve you will cause plant life to grieve literally creation will groan until ultimately we get revealed when do we get revealed when the rapture happens everybody's gonna know that we were the daughters and sons of God so creation is going to keep on lambasting you with itself until God gets caught up in the sky. It is ideal that you reprieve creation from your insanity and repent. But if you don't, either way, I'm cool. I will always be safe. That guy that is making a decision to afflict my ministry with witchcraft because he can't stand the prospect of me marrying another man, he is going to get left here to endure the tribulation, realizing that he wasted his years of youth being a fool when the Lord had called him to preach. And by the time his eyes were opened, he now had to endure re rejecting the mark of the beast or taking it in a season of the human race where surviving it is the, the the improbability now he is now going to be among the improbable that are unlikely to survive it right now most of the human race can survive these conditions that we're in but in the tribulation most of the human race is going to fall like dominoes and this guy is going to enter the tribulation after the church gets raptured and he's going to regret it like no man's business but i am also rooting for that same fool to repent realize that whoops you lost me but guess what you could also lose your soul if you don't repent what does it profit a man to gain the love of his life marrying another man and then uh, to, to gain that the, the love of his life never getting married to another man and they lose his soul what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and yet lose his soul he's a fool he lost his life because he literally did not trust god turned to voodoo of course then the lord slapped him out of the way because he had no business being in my life and now he won't stop afflicting i am not going to be in a hunger games arena with some fool that doesn't know jesus because i'm not in the arena is that basic the enemy is out there the enemy is the prince of the power of the air he is causing you guys to butt heads against each other that you might not focus on what is important i will not partake in the narrative of either of these people on the two extremes of this world war i am trying to make you see that in the absence of repentance there will indeed be the end of the world through many more wars than what you're dealing with right now you are literally too shallow for what's going on there are wars breaking out in the world all over the show oh my goodness guys like you're in trouble like i cannot stop talking your president in the united states joe biden is currently i don't know if he has left or what in israel and he is busy signing some two-state solution with a yair yaya whatever lapid um i don't like him i, I don't like that yaya lapid guy i would much rather either neftali bennett come back or who is this benjamin netanyahu because this guy is is pro two-state solution in a way that netanyahu or bennett weren't he is literally allowing nonsense to happen and then on top of that he goes forward on um on national television and then speaks against Iran. He speaks against Iran. Here is Yahi Lapid saying that Iran is the bane of our existence. Joe Biden is busy saying that diplomacy is the best way to deal with Iran. Yahi is like, no, these guys, there's nothing we can do about them. So he agrees that there is no peace in the region where Iran is, 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 is involved. That is what this Yahi guy is saying. So he basically is um, in agreement that, uh, of the fact that Iran is a massive threat to Israel and the region generally. And so too does the United Arab Emir Emirates, you, you get, like the Arab nations, more or less all agree that Iran is a big fat problem in the region and also like Palestine they're a big fat problem in the region especially Iran and this guy agrees that that's what's going on but alongside it once a two-state solution with Iran he's weakening Israel he's dividing parting the land a prophecy spoken against um the the, the nations of this world that are going to do that that God is going to judge them those who will try to heave away Jerusalem who will become like a cup of trembling in the last days God is going to wreak havoc in their lives and any president that ushers in the division of God's land is going to have a hard time so the U.S. is facing a whole bunch of judgment if at all they don't bring Biden from his lofty position. That guy needs to be voted out of power in the next coming elections. He needs to go because he's going against the Abraham Accords and he's signing a deal with a newly infiltrated temporary before Netanyahu comes back because people think he's coming back. Yayi Lapid guy who is happy with a two-state solution when most of Palestinian citizens don't agree with the two-state solution. They want Jerusalem, period, as for their own, as their state as their capital but 
it belongs to Israel. So because of the fact that Palestine does not even agree with the two-state solution for Joe Biden to rock up and say that it's possible for it to be done, is basically to enter the Middle East into a prolific war that has never been seen in the history of the human race and so therefore bring the world to an end because Christ is the only one that's going to end war in that region. But the Antichrist is going to prosper to bring peace to that land. The Antichrist is the one that's going to indeed come up with things like two-state solutions to give them all over like uh, for all of five seconds worth of peace in that region. So we are looking and we are literally tapering towards the end of days and we need to try and see if we can pray that this be stopped for your sake. Otherwise repent, give your life to the Lord so you can get taken in the rapture. Things are happening at such a crazy rate right now. This Yair Lapid is happy to sign with Biden a two-state solution. The Palestinian um, president guy is, is like, yeah, 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 no, that's what we need to do. He, is it East Jerusalem or what? That, um, who is this guy? Joe Biden went to without allowing any of the Jews to go there. Anybody from the Israel uh, side is not to go there because he's trying to negotiate with the Palestinian president alone, just by himself, with no Israeli people being there. How's that a mediation? It's more like I'm picking sides. You literally have got one foot in this place and one foot in the other. And a nation divided cannot stand. A person divided, therefore, in and of himself cannot stand. So whatever Joe Biden is doing is going to bring about lots of conflict in that region. Lots more. No, most of Palestine don't agree. They don't agree on the two-state solution in the same way that most of Israel don't. They will ever be at loggerheads with each other. So to sign that treaty is to basically make them ballot. They want to bomb each other over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. He is not only ignoring the Abraham Accords. It's the first time he has been to the region, Joe Biden, in all of his presidency. Where have you ever seen a U.S. president ignoring that region for so long after taking term? That is the first problem. And then they bring in some prime minister guy that has just replaced um, Naftali Bennett. And this guy is doing everything that we have all been praying against. And then while during the middle of that random situation, so Israel needs to be protected. The security of Israel is at threat, is at risk right now. Iran rocks up on some, guess what? Guess what? Joe Biden wants to first of all reignite that, that Iranian nuclear deal. Iran is then like, I don't care what you say. Even if you don't want to sign a nuclear deal with us, we have got enough uranium, in the, uh, weapon enriched, you, what is this weapons grade enriched uranium? To hook up a nuke and we're currently trying to build one so israel is now coming on some well if that's the case i guess we're going to come and bomb you first we're going to come and ransack your environment i'm going to give you a broken bow elam i'm going to go and bomb your nuclear reactor i'm going to go and bomb first before you bomb us because you are a threat to the region so all of this calamity going on joe biden is like no i'm just gonna go to palestine and swing up and down how in the world are you gonna go divide a land that is pro iran that is going to stand against israel once it's been given power and then claim to be fostering peace do you not see that joe biden is bringing about the end of days that deed is just another contributor to the mutiny against not italy iran mm -mm, not iran israel they all start with an i it's all happening at such a crazy pace that I don't even know if it's worth my while to try and get people to repent so God will basically take Joe Biden out of office so that Yair Lapid will literally just fizzle away just as quickly as he arrived on the scene so that some other either president or prime minister of Israel that is anti-Iran, anti-Palestine will come back into power to try and protect the region so that we can be given time. Otherwise, kaput. Do you understand? Kaput. All of these things are happening while you're busy talking about y'all need to leave these black men alone. They ain't jack. Just walk away. Ain't nothing good ain't gonna happen for ya. Like seriously, you're not concentrating on the right stuff. All of these things. Um, uh, understand that the thing that is going to cause the Hebrews to embrace the Antichrist is so much conflict in the region. So much conflict that there's going to be a guy that's going to prosper to still it, silence it. This two-state solution is going to cause all different kinds of wars and bombs. With Iran being like. I got weapons grade uranium. Israel is gonna try and wreak havoc in Iran's life. When then there is like shambles all over the Middle East, there's gonna be a dude that's gonna prosper or foster peace between Iran, Israel, Palestine, U UAE, all of the basically the Middle East for all of five seconds, of course, because they're gonna say peace and security, peace and security, and then all of a sudden there is calamity. So only look at world events and then look at what you're concentrating on and realize just how futile you likely are. The world is coming to an end. Bible prophecy is unfolding right before your very eyes, and I'm trying to root for the human race to survive this i am trying to root for people to see that joe biden gotta go that no matter how much the american conglomerate might have some real problems with the conservative side no matter how many bibles you might try to burn no matter how much you want to try and proliferate the woke agenda you gotta admit it is a fallacy you gotta admit it is a heresy you gotta admit it is basically dirty you gotta admit that there is nothing wholesome about trying to say that men and can, men can have children babies as in in their own bellies right 
um, produ procreate, be pregnant, you gotta admit that there was something fundamentally satanic, diabolical, and obviously causing the human race to go crazy about the woke agenda. Enough for you to vote for at least the next two terms for a conservative president who is pro-Israel. And then maybe one day, just one day, you might then perhaps have another Democrat come into the party that's not so woke. Like, whatever you want to do, I don't care about politics. Frankly, what needs to happen is for the most sober, rational person for the his for the future of the human race in the United States to take presidency, that Israel might still have protection from the West. Because when Israel loses protection from the West, or it has a weak, shaky protection like that of Joe Biden, we're dealing with Gog and Magog, we're dealing with Iran, we're dealing with Persia, Pushkut, whatever, coming together in that Gog and Magog war to try and ransack Israel. And that Gog and Magog war, people, the scholars in Bible prophecy, disagree or agree as to whether it's going to happen before the rapture or after the rapture. I frankly don't know. All I know is that everything is just looking kind of gangster right now, sufficiently enough for me to be scared, not so much for me, but for you. The only way to prevent perfect conditions for Gog and Magog to happen is to make sure that Israel still has protection from the West. And with Joe Biden and all you can talk about are boyfriends that ain't Jack. Drinking, being given in marriage, doing what you want to do, thoughts and intentions evil continually, days of Noah. While Yair Lapid is giving away Israel to the enemy, while Joe Biden is, dis is refusing to let Jews, Hebrews, Israelites to go to a meeting in their own land, participate in it, a, a discussion, a chat about their own country. Something that is fulfilling Bible prophecy as an event that must happen before the very end of the world comes. And all you can think about is making sure that Garabo does not get married to another man. I'm sorry guys, but no. At this point, you are literally no better than my cat. Who is just sitting in the dust thinking that it is okay to do that and still enter heaven and be embraced. You're sitting in the dust and you hope to make it to heaven when you die. This cat is gonna sleep in my small little environment after chilling in the dust like that. It's a cat. It has no ability to comprehend how inappropriate what it's doing is. You're made larger than the animals, higher you've got dominion over them and yet you're like my cat, dust bathing and you hope to make it to heaven. All the best guys. I pray that the Lord comes and takes his church but also low-key I pray that the Lord stays his hand from fulfilling his wrath against you because I feel sorry for you. I'm signing out in Christ's name Cranke. I hope you repent. Peace.